So this show is a continuation of work that I started during my master's degree, um, which was um, a thesis show entitled Membryonics, which really focused on the sort of deconstruction of female identity and um, autonomy within the medical system, especially during regarding like reproduction and um, how the medical system treats females during that process, whether it's a positive process or a negative process. Um, and this show kind of takes part, some of these pieces are from, from embryonics and then um, continues with that work into sort of reclaiming that identity. So it's a little bit more of a positive spin. Um, and taking that reproductive process and sort of demedicalizing it and using that to reclaim and sort of reconstruct the female identity. I would consider it feminist work, certainly, yeah. Um, Membryonics really focused on trauma and loss, um, particularly like pregnancy and infant loss, and the fact that it's sort of not spoken about and there's very little public empathy, and it's, um, it's sort of one of those female processes that doesn't, it's not acknowledged and it's not allowed to be, you're not allowed to grieve publicly and it's sort of all swept under the rug. And I feel that really harkens back to that, the way our society still, even today, wants to very much sort of clean up and hermetically seal the female body and it doesn't want, us, it doesn't want to acknowledge that we expel things, including life and death and it's, that's okay, and the, my work, I try to celebrate that act and very much honor it as a miracle rather than something that's sort of, you almost consider dirty, I think that's really wrong. So, um, and yet I really also sort of deliberately reference that idea of the female body as this like sacred vessel, which come, is the, throughout art history, like Madonna is the vessel of Christ, Etc. Is that kind of it all harkens back to that, but at the same time, it can be both. It can be both sacred and messy <laughs> and traumatic, and there's scar tissue, and it's not perfect, and um, there's wrinkles and flesh, and it's real. It's a lived body that does create something incredible. So, uh, yeah, I guess I'm just trying to really acknowledge that without. Glossing it over is certainly advertising and everything else. So I do, um, my paintings are based very much from medical imagery and um, aspects of the human body, often particularly female aspects. Um, some of them are from images from actual procedures uh, or uh, I tend to gravitate a lot towards old medical drawings just for the sheer beauty of them because they are really very artistic and kind of lovely. Um, and then I also use a lot of alternative materials. These are, I always start with paint, with acrylic paint, um, but they're very much mixed media assemblages. So, and I take a lot of inspiration from the actual materials, um, just even touching them and seeing how they behave. It's sort of process-based for me, but they, I try to make sure that all my two materials have some sort of significance. <laughs> Um, sorry. <laughs> so uh, things like metal and um, the man-made materials often for me sort of symbolize the medical system coming into and invading the body a little bit. Um, and then the warmer materials like fabric and wood and even the patterning tend to be sort of the, that more feminine side, the more organic, soft, side of it, and I try to juxtapose those together a lot. Um, and then there's even things like some of the metal, I, lo I love to use real lead, and I love the fact that it's actually poisonous. There's the, that sort of, I have to wear gloves when I work with it, and I, there's something really emotionally significant for me about that, that it's, it, you know, has the potential to actually deteriorate the human body, and that it's, but I'm using it to sort of stitch it together at the same time, and so it keeps the, there's a, a lot of emotional weight to that. 
Um, and I also like to use a lot of materials that feel sort of opulent and precious, same with the paint colors. And that's my way of sort of, again, honoring the female body and um, trying to depict it as something to be treasured and um, really cared for. And that it's both, it, I like it to feel both fragile and strong at the same time. And that it, again, can be both. Um, which also brings it into why they're so three-dimensional is because that, for me, that helps express sort of that interchange in between the exterior and the interior, whether that be physical or emotional. So that's sort of mirrored in the art object and that I like to create spaces within the art object that kind of draw the viewer in and you kind of want to look around these little corners because there's something glittery there and it brings you into the interior space of the body but it's also spilling out into the viewer space. They're not contained on a canvas within a little square. And so there's sort of this definite physical exchange of space. And um, that's to symbolize that physical exchange of emotion and self between, yeah, the female self and sort of the ex exteriors that are affecting her. Um, yeah, and same with patterning um, really comes back to, I use a, like, a lot of, um, very sinuous and floral patterns to sort of symbolize that female exterior, but I use them to create structure within things that are depicting the female interior, so that again, you're, that's still that exchange of space and emotion.